right, so I just walked into the marketing department over here at Epilog, and the first thing I saw were these two ancient Epilog machines, and I've got Mike with me today to explain to me what these are and where they came from, and just, they are the, like the coolest little <laughs> lasers I've seen, but I have so many questions. So Mike, why don't we start with this unit right here? Uh, tell me about it. Okay, this is the Epilog Eclipse unit. Okay. It's the very first laser that we manufactured, and it came on the market in 1991 or 92. I can't remember, but it was the first laser of its type. It used CorelDRAW as its graphic software. It printed through a parallel port. It's got an 11 by 11 inch work area. <laughs> oh, that's massive. <laughs> Big. <laughs> 11 by 11 inch work area. And is it an RF tube or a, C or a glass tube? It's an RF tube. So the RF tube is a SINRAD tube that's mounted in the leg. And so the SINRAD tube is a long skinny tube. Yeah. And it's vertically mounted in the leg. It hits a mirror over here. Then it hits another mirror here and goes down and engraves. The table moves and yeah. the carriage moves back in the X direction. The the table moves in the Y. Wow. So that was the first iteration of, of an epilogue right here. And, uh, it's definitely got some, some, some time on it for sure. Yep. I see some ribbon cables in there, but still, um, I have to say the, uh, manufacturing quality is still wonderful. Even, even for its, its first unit. I think it's, uh, I think it's really nice. So you've got some buttons here. Um, you've got door, online, repeat, reset, faster, or slower. Right. <laughs> so, Tell me about those. <laughs> so the door, when you press this button, it pops, there's a solenoid and it pops the door open. This isn't plugged in, so we can't see right. it now, but that's what happens. The it, online just tells you that it's online, it's connected, it's ready to go. It's ready to accept a job. Okay. And the repeat is just the repeat of the job that you just did. Okay. Um, reset is to reset the home position. Mm -hmm. And then the speed, now this is actually kind of funny because there are six speed settings from slow to faster. The power was always the same. Oh, right. There's no power adjustment. And it's just, just it's controlled by the speed. Right. Right. That and that's cool. what these two buttons are so Got it. just faster and slower. So, uh, let me ask you this. So you said 11 inches by 11 inches, right? right? So if you wanted to do a sign that was 11 inches by 11 inches, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to blame Epilogue for this. How long would that have job would have taken on this machine? Do you, do you remember? This is approximately, a, this is a 25 watt machine. Okay. And so if you were going to do a wooden plaque, it would take probably 35 minutes. Okay. So that's not horrible. Sometimes, like I noticed on this little card that used to ship with it, uh, would that be the initial depth or would you have to run that job a few times to no, get that kind of depth? That's the initial depth. Oh, right. Very cool. Let's talk about the bigger unit here. Uh, with the, how many, uh, were these released at the same time or was this a later iteration? No, this is a later iteration. So we sold this um, in this configuration for about a year. Okay. And then we made a bigger one that was 11 by 17. Okay. And then we sold that one for about a year. While we were selling the 11 by 17, we were developing this. This one has quite a few features that are still found in machines today. It has a 22 by 17 inch work area, which is two legal size or tabloid size pages. Okay. It's able to uh, engrave quite a bit larger area. Yeah. Which made a lot of people happy. It's got 600 DPI. That's one thing about this machine is it was only 300 DPI. It's not bad though. It's not bad. It's I mean, bad. you look at the yeah, engraving quality great. and it looks pretty looks good. looks great. Yeah. But this one has up to 600 DPI, and it's got a full control panel. Yeah, it sure does. And it has a scroll wheel built into it. Um, and it looks like you still have the speed. You've got 
a focus button, stop online, some of the same features, but you've got a full control panel here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can print a job over and it would show up here. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you know which job you had. Now this one, you've got full speed and power control from zero or from one to 100% okay. on both of them. And so you had quite a bit more control. You also have focus. This has a motorized table. I see that. Is it on like a scissor thing? No, it's a motor with gears and um, you can't see them, but lean screws. Got it. Okay. So it lifts up and that's what the focus is for. Now, one thing that I noticed right away is that uh, I don't see where the laser source could be. The laser source on this is underneath. Okay. So it's you packed way so underneath here. There's a panel here. You can feel the edge of the panel. Uh -huh. And it's still a Sinrad tube. So this is a 25 watt laser. But if you had to change out the laser tube, you'd have to take it off its stand and tilt it backwards, um, which was a little bit convoluted. But, yeah. uh, but those Sinrad tubes, they lasted a long time. Right. And... And I noticed that the, uh, the fume extraction is kind of unique. Uh, I noticed that here. It looks like it has some kind of, um, I don't know. It looks like the hose comes up, but then there's this bar here and it's kind of built into the gantry arm. Is that, is that's, am, I, am I right? That's correct. Okay. And so the exhaust happens at the point of burn. Mm -hmm. And so, so it moves with the carriage. Yep. And... Um, you're exhausting at the point of burn, which kept the machine really clean. Why do you think that was, uh, that model was not adopted moving forward? Do you have any ideas of maybe some of the drawbacks of having that kind of system? The big reason that it didn't go forward with other machines is that it weighs a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it impacted your ability to vector cut smooth curves. Got it. So the more weight you have, dragging on the carriage, the less efficient you are at vector cutting. Yeah. I also noticed there isn't an air assist, uh, yet. So that wasn't kind of a thing yet. No, we're cutting. So, but then what year was this one released? This was released in 94 Very cool. and we sold it until 97. What a cool little history lesson on, uh, on epilogue. Well, Mike, thanks for telling me about that, man. I really appreciate that. What a cool little unit. All right, well, now you know where Epilogue started from.